welcome to the Wind Tunnel 3 lab. So what we're going to be doing in this, in this lab is pretty much similar to Wind Tunnel 1 and Wind Tunnel 2. So we're going to be measuring the pressure um, in increments of 1 millimeter from the surface right here from the, this uh, flat plane all the way to the top until we have five readings that are constant. So we're going to start over here at the bottom. We're going to increase in 1 millimeter the height of the pitot tube. We're going to record each pressure from mat number 5. And once we start getting 5 readings that have the same pressure, we're going to switch from this hole, hole number 2, all the way to hole number 3, and repeat the process for hole 4, 5, and 6. So we're going to be doing this for two ducts. So over here we have already the rough duct that has a rough surface on the entrance. And then we're going to repeat the same process for the smooth duct, which has a smoother surface over here in the middle part. So once we do that, we're going to do an analysis to determine the boundary layer that forms on this duct. So that's it for the procedures. So for the analysis part of our wind tunnel, there's some concept that we need to cover. Uh, you probably haven't covered yet this in class, but we're just gonna go over it uh, really quick. So as you have seen before in our previous uh, wind tunnel experiments, we have seen repeatedly many times that the shape of the air or the pressure makes inside the duct is kind of like a parabola, right? We have seen this in the wind tunnel one, wind tunnel two, etc. However, this time that we're testing the ducts, we have a plate inside. Instead of the duct being straight and nothing inside, this one is separated in two halves. So the air will flow differently. So when the air flows through a surface, near the surface, really close to the surface, there's some effects that happens to the airflow. So it will produce something like these shapes. So what's happening is that when we test our uh, flow or whatever fluid that we're testing, we usually assume that there's no viscosity on it, or we assume that the viscosity doesn't have a really, uh, the viscosity doesn't have much effect on the fluid, on the velocity of the fluid. However, when you're flowing really close to a certain surface, for example, in a flat surface, there's a small region where the viscosity will have some effects on the way the velocity is shaped. So you can see we have our air flowing really close to a flat plate. So as we get close, we see it starts making this shape. So this is what we call the, call the boundary layer. So everything below this layer will behave in two different ways. It could be a laminar flow or a turbulent flow. And what we mean by laminar or turbulent flow is just the way the air is flowing. And laminar flow is just a smooth flow. The fluid is just, mo just moving smoothly, really nice, really soft. But once we get to the turbulent part, all the fluid is just moving around randomly, and there's some uh, shakes and bumps. Just like when we are on a plane, we, see, we hear the word turbulence, you can see that there's not, it's not a smooth flow. So as we said, really close to the surface, the viscosity, the viscosity of the fluid will play an effect and the way the velocity is shaped. So what you guys are trying to measure in this lab is you will measure the height of this boundary layer. So every fluid, all the fluid above this layer will flow smoothly, will flow like every other fluid we have measured so far, just like this shape. But over here really close, we will have this layer. So you guys will be measuring the height of this layer at different lengths. So you can see this is a function of length. So the farther away you are from the entrance of the duct, the higher your boundary layer will be. So if you see over here in this drawing, this is pretty much what you guys will see for this lab. Once you plot all your pressures, you will see that as the air goes in, it's, it spreads out in two different parts, and it will start making this layer over here, this, this shape. So as you get farther away from the entrance, you can see how the boundary layer keeps on increasing until there's a point where the air will just start flowing back smoothly because we, we, are, we, are, we are out of that boundary layer. So the way to calculate that boundary layer is by something we, we call the Reynolds number. So these Reynolds numbers is just a unitless number 
that tells us the velocity, that tells us the characteristics of the fluid, whether it's flowing smoothly or turbulent. So this here in the real numbers, we have the density of the fluid, the velocity of the fluid, the length where we're testing, and the viscosity of the fluid. So all of these are pretty much constants. The only ones that you guys have to pretty much get is the length. This is the one, one of the variables that we need to look for. So once we get, we do, we plot our numbers. If we get a value below 2,300, we say that the fluid is laminar. If we get a value above 2,300, then we're saying that the flow is turbulent. And depending if we're uh, getting a laminar or turbulent fluid, that's how we're gonna ca calculate our boundary layer. So you see in your, in your procedure manual, we have two deltas. We have one that says delta uh, measure, and we have delta calculated. So the delta measure will be the height at which you started getting all the five constant pressures. So if you are at five millimeters, and then you started getting from that point the same pressure those five times, that will be your delta measure that you're gonna plot, you're gonna write down in your notebook. For the delta calculated, you will use the other formulas that appear in your procedures. And there's two of them. There's one for laminar and for turbulent. So after you do, you plot your renal numbers. If you get a value below 2,300, you will use the equation for the delta for the laminar one. If your value is way above the 2,300, then we'll you will use your equation for the turbulent ones. And all, all of them are over there in your procedures. So you can say they're really plug and chuck. As long as you have your numbers, I will give you guys what your values will be here uh, to plot. And from there, you guys will be able to plot on your notebook this shape based on what you have calculated. So you just have to keep in mind that the delta calculated should be really close to the measure one. So you're just trying to find how much of a difference you got from each other. So for example, if your delta measure was uh, four millimeters, and your delta calculator was 0.41 or something, then you know that you're really close to the delta height for your boundary layer. So that's it for boundary layer. I'm sure you guys will see more of this in class, but if you have any more questions, just let me know before you guys turn in your report. Thank you.